Hi there, it's your boy Ben. We're diving back more than five to six million years at a site called Site B in Bayside, Melbourne, Australia. What's this I'm pointing to? What could it possibly? It looks like a giant yam at the bottom of the sea floor. But that is no yam. What that is, is a physoteroid tooth from an ancient type of sperm whale that lived in the late Miocene and early Pliocene. Ah, bugger. It's missing the tip, but almost every single one are missing the tip. You can see the iron stone embedded all the way around it. It's a spectacular piece. Whoa! Now this is a chunky tooth. And you might be looking at it and going, Ben, it just looks like a giant yam. Well, you're a little bit right. It does look like a yam. But what this represents is something that's pretty special. It may be a tooth from a macro raptorial sperm whale. And for those of you who don't know, modern sperm whales today only have teeth on their lower jaws. It's quite contestable whether or not they use it for prey capture at all. But the macro raptorial sperm whales that thrived off Bayside roughly five to six million years ago had teeth in their lower jaws and in their upper jaws interlocking with one another. There's a tremendous debate at the moment whether or not they fed on the flesh of baleen whales when they were alive. Now this tooth probably comes from a smaller variety of killer sperm whale, probably something similar to Acrophyceta at the bottom there that was found in Peru. The unfortunate thing about this tooth, it's missing the tip, but it's quite clearly a recent break and the rest of it is out there somewhere. Oh, sea urchins. God, one went right through my finger the other day. Go away. Don't want to see you at all. Take a deep breath again. There we go. All right, which is about five to six million years of age, the locality that you can find these fossils from. And there's this weird credit card sized specimen at the bottom here. Turns out it's from a Pelagonitha, the largest flying bird of all time. It's part of its wing bone. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, almost dropped it, but we got it. Whoa! Now, if you left this specimen at the bottom of the seafloor, I couldn't blame you because it really doesn't look like much. But to me, there's no doubt in my mind that it came from the largest flying bird that ever took to the sky, the Pelagonithids. How can we tell that? Well, it's this unmistakable cross section. The cortex, the thickness of the bone is only two to three millimeters thick all the way around, it's then hollow and infilled with sediment, a characteristic that's only really known from pelagonithids. It's a portion of wing bone, and the pelagonithids themselves, like I said, they are the largest flying birds. They had a wingspan between six and seven meters in length. That height of a giraffe. They had these bizarre pseudo teeth coming from the bill and cladistic analyses make them even stranger. Some people believe that they're more closely related to chickens and geese and ducks than any other living bird on the planet. This is one of only a handful of specimens that has ever been recovered from the continent of Australia. And of course, the only place that you can find them in Australia is in Bayside, Bayside Melbourne. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked what you've seen, check it out description or go to my bio. There you'll find our Patreon with never before seen footage of similar specimens. It's only with your help that we can find the heritage of Melbourne. It's lying on the bottom of the sea floor. It's ready to be picked up. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in order to find this stuff. Launching the expeditions can take days of effort. Finding the specimens is equally as hard. Consolidating the specimens in glue, writing up the data associated with each and every single one of these fossils, and then taking it and putting it in place, State Repository of Museums Victoria. Every single specimen that you've seen here will eventually make its way into the State Museum, where scientists from all over the world will be able to study them. And let alone all of the video stuff that we do behind the scenes and all the editing as well. There's a lot that happens. It's only with your help that we can make Bayside Melbourne more accessible. Thank you so much for watching. Whoa! Join us in the next episode as we go searching for some of the chonkest elements known in the fossil record. 
the ear bones of whales. Why it is that they are my favorite bones to find of all time. This one looks a little bit like chocolate. Burn out. <laughs>